Yeah, this is Robin from the Back Pain Secret Podcast, and today we're going to talk about how to make more money to heal your back pain. I'm going to be right back, going to play the intro song first. So, here's the important question. How can back pain sufferers like us, who don't want to use prescription drugs or go through surgery, heal our back pain? How do we live our daily lives in a way that allows us to go to work, take care of our families, enjoy life, and still manage our back pain? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Robin Wakem, and welcome to Back Pain Secrets. Okay, guys, I'm back, um, and today we're going to talk about how to make more money to heal your back pain. It's kind of a strange uh, topic, uh, but we're going to get in, into it, okay? But before, guys, I'm going to give you a short update what's been going on here in my life, you know. Uh, it's been really, really hectic. And as you know, uh, if you've been following me, I'm trying to be on all the different networks, you know. Um, and it's just been too much. I got all the other stuff, different physio businesses. So I'm, I'm uh, re- redoing a bit how I'm going to set this up, okay. So I'm going to do go live for 10 minutes every day on, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, okay. I'm also going to produce a podcast more or less every day. So that's going to be the core way to to follow me in the future. I'm going to actually take away a few of the other networks, you know, just try to focus on what was really working. And especially the podcast, you know, it's 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 not it's last month. I had like, I think, 1,200 new listeners to that, you know. So I'm definitely putting some more focus into that. Okay, but anyway, today's focus, how to make more money to heal your back pain, okay? And um, this is something I get, I get a lot of patients that come into my office and they have this worry and they have this anxiety. And when, when you start to ask them questions about it, you know, a lot of times it comes back to the money issue, you know? So what the hell do a physiotherapist know about money, you know? Well, there are, I'm, I'm not a financial uh, planner or an expert okay so i'm just going to give you some tips what has worked for me uh, okay and also what i've seen for that has worked for other people that are much more successful than i am in making money okay so as always i have this patient story and it's a made-up name of course we can call this guy lucas i met lucas a few years back and he had no kids and uh, he was working like all kinds of different work, work, work and stuff. You know, he was he was in carpentry. He was he was doing some painting. Once in a while, he was having had an office job. You know, he's just doing all these different jobs and nothing more than a few months. You know, so he had no consistency. He was just jumping from job to job. You know, he also had a herniated disc, uh, level L four, L five. Uh, he'd had this for a few years. He didn't really know how. He, how, how it became, why, why he got it, you know. He just woke up one morning, more or less, and he had radiation down his leg, and he was very, very in pain, more or less, constantly through this, especially this radiation down his right leg. And he also noticed during the years here, whenever he he uh, was worrying, you know, he was worrying, the pain increased in his back and the radiation down his leg increased, okay. He also had problems sleeping and... Uh, I was asking him questions, you know, uh, when I first met him, you know, why are you always worrying, you know, what, what, what is this worrying? Well, he was telling me, and this came after a few meetings, he was telling me, you know, well, I grew up with no money, I don't have any money now, so I always feel poor, you know, I don't really, I, I'm, I'm always really, uh, really scared that I'm not going to be able to pay my bills on a weekly basis, you know. So, Externally, you know, uh, in his mind, he was working hard, you know, uh, but he also had this, this, the only thing that really calmed him down was to drink beer, okay? So every day after work, he had a few beers, and at the bar, it was mostly people that was complaining a lot, you know, and for some reason, he was also coming in in this really negative mood that he was complaining about his life, the money situation, the bad economy, and on and on, you know? Most of his friends that he ha- hang out with, hung out with, you know, they didn't really have any money at all themselves. They were in the same position that he was, you know. And the 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 people he was hanging out with, you know, they didn't really have any goals whatsoever, you know. They were just like hanging out, living day by day, going to job, woke up in the morning, had breakfast, went to the job, 
uh, hit the bar, went home, watched TV, and went to bed, and just repeated that, you know. But internally, you know, Lucas, he, he, he felt like he wanted more out of life, you know. He definitely wanted more out of life. He wanted to contribute more, and he, he also wanted to get some new friends. Yeah, he wasn't saying that he was going to give up on his old friends, but he was just want a few new friends that actually were more positive and had more, more, uh, more goals and that he, he, he could learn from. Um, he also wanted to fix his back, of course, because this pain was really, really irritating him big time. He also wanted a girlfriend, you know. He had had a few relationships off and on, but never really, nothing really stuck, you know. It's more or less like his job, you know. It was just like a few months, and then, then he switched girlfriends, and, and it didn't really work out, you know. He also wanted to start a family. Uh, growing up, uh, his dad left the family quite quite early, uh, when he was just a few years of age, and he always had like this really sad thing uh, in his heart when he's thinking about when he's growing up, and he did he wanted to have kids, and he wanted to be there for his kids, you know. And he also had this this internal feeling <clears throat> constantly. He was telling me, you know, that he, kept, he felt kind of ashamed that he wasn't able to to take care of himself financially, you know, that he wasn't making more money. And he was really frustrated because he, he did not understand. He thought he was really working hard and he didn't, didn't understand, you know, why he wasn't making more money. And he was telling me I was he was just living by himself and he didn't even want to think about if he would have a family or girlfriend or, or, or kids, you know, how he would be able to take care of them. OK, so he was very, very anxious and nervous regarding the whole money situation and other stuff in his life as well. But if you if you came down to the root of it all, it was, it was really, really money related, you know. So you say, you know, what the hell is he doing in with his physiotherapist? You know, why am I, I talking about this? Because most people that come and visit me, I've been working as a physiotherapist for over 20 years, you know, and, and most people that visit me, they have been and they gotten all the regular exercises and all the regular stuff they do. So a lot of times there is like uh, stuff that, that you need to deal with in order to heal you back long term. OK, so I was telling him, you know, uh, Lucas, like it's you, you got to look at this in a different way. You know, uh, I understand that the money stuff is is really irritating you, but you're not going to make money just to put in more more hours. You know, it all starts first off uh, with your low self-worth. OK. And I don't, I'm not saying that to piss you off, Lucas, but you're a great guy, you know, for, you're 40 years, you seem to have a good heart, you know, but when you talk about yourself and everyone, like the stuff in your life, it, it's quite apparent that, that you, you're, you don't think any high thoughts of yourself, you know, and you, that, that has to change, you know, because if you don't value yourself, Lucas, no one else will value you. It, it might sound hard, and but that's, that's the truth. That's, how, how society works, you know. So you have to have this this uh, feeling in your body and in your brain and all over your body that, that you you can provide value, you know. You are valuable. Uh, you also have to have something to contribute, okay. And also have this 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 uh, attitude, you know, that whatever problems that you are in now, financial or other problems, it's on you to fix it, you know. It's on you to fix it. You might need some help, okay? You might need some training. You might need some support from someone. But it's your job to, to really uh, steer the ship, you know. Uh, people around you can definitely give you a hand and, and help you and stuff. But you really, no one else is going to be as interested in fixing your own problem as, your, as yourself, okay? Um, and it's also very, very important. I meet this a lot of people that have financial problems and other problems as well that they think that something magical with it will just appear and all the problems will, will just go away okay uh, i told lucas you know you're not gonna win the lottery okay uh, forget about that you know uh, you're not gonna get lucky whatever thing that's gonna make you get through this you know it's hard work and dedication and decide internally that that this shit stops now you know then we went to the plan, you know, and I was trying to keep it very simple for Lucas because I, was, I saw that he was a bit sad, but at the same time, uh, I think he understood that this was the stuff that he needed to hear, you know. So I was telling him, him the, 
there are only two things, Lucas, that are going to change your life, okay? And number one, the first thing is something new comes into your life, okay? And this could be like, like I said, you know, if, if some, if you win the lottery or, or if, if, you know, something like that, but the chances of that is very, very slim to nothing more or less, you know, and number two, um, that is if something new comes into yourself, okay, into yourself. And that might seem a bit deep, but what I mean there is you, you, when you, when something else comes into yourself, you know, you get a greater hunger, you get a greater passion, you get more commitment of yourself, okay? And um, you just have this feeling every morning when you wake up that I, I'm going to go out and crush it today, okay? I'm going to go out and, and uh, provide so much value that uh, to the world and to my employer or, or people around me that I cannot help to get paid for it, okay? Um, you can't make more money if you don't have anything to sell. I was telling him as well, you know, and he was looking at me, you know, and, 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 and he said, well, I don't really have anything to sell, you know, and I asked him, what can you offer? You know, what are you selling, Lucas? You can sell yourself. And I, with that, I mean, your ability to serve other people. Okay. That's huge. You're also selling your character when you meet other people. Okay. And you also are selling the value that you can actually provide to the world around you, okay? And that's huge, but you have to figure out what you are selling, you know, because you're always selling something. Basically, when it all comes down, you know, at the end of the day, you have to, pers uh, to be able to persuade the world that you have something to offer the world, okay? And you have something to offer the world, Lucas. I know that, you know. So he talk, we talked about this, you know, do, are you an entrepreneur? If you were an entrepreneur, Lucas, for example, if you had, do you have a program? Do you have a service? Do you have a product that you can use, you know? And if you do have these things, you know, how well or have you dialed into the offer, you know? What is your messaging? What's your marketing? What is your distribution of that product, you know? What's the customer service like? Is it all world class? If not, you know, you need to, to, to start looking at that and try to, to perfect those different things in order to make more money, okay? And if you're an employee, employee if, you, if you don't have your own company and you don't want to be an entrepreneur, you want to work for someone, you know, you have to go back and look into that company and, and just learn. Whenever you I, – I run companies and, and whenever – I or anyone else that, that uh, runs a company, what you look at, you know, is to what are the employees, the people that around you that are, you're working with, which are the ones that are actually, they want to learn the most, okay? And what are, are the, the people around you that want to contribute the most, okay? When you're a business owner, you, you pay very close attention to that, you know? And if you meet those people in your organizations, that are willing to learn and contribute more than anyone else, you know, you want to keep them in the organization and they're going to get well paid as well. So a question I want you to start asking yourself, Lucas, every day is, uh, what can you like provide in value uh, to your company each and every day? Okay. How, can you do this every day? Every day you ask, you know, how can I pro more, provide more value to the company, my employer, than anyone else around me? Okay. It's a very sing uh, simple question. You know, how can I provide more value to everyone than ev anyone else around me? You know, if you continue to ask that question and looking for the answers, you know, stuff is going to happen in your life. Okay. You have to be obsessed with this, you know. You have to make a decision internally that you're going to contribute, okay? Um, and, and if you do that, uh, the company and people around you in all aspects of your life are going to pick up on that, you know. Uh, how much can you contribute? Instead of taking all the time, everyone is trying to take, you know. Give me, give me, give me. You're giving, okay? And you might, once in a while, you know, you might get burned, you know. People will will um, will just take advantage of you. But if you continue continue to contribute like that, 
nothing can really stop you, you know, because there's a lot of other people around there in the world that are contributing as well. And they are looking for people like you. So I was telling that to Lucas. Okay, so uh, the achievement Lucas had, you know, I met Lucas a few times, but then he had like three or four months when he wasn't uh, coming for visits and then he came back. So he came back and first off, he was, he was taking a few courses in public speaking, okay, and also selling. And we had actually had a chat regarding this, you know, and I was telling Lucas, you know, the, the best thing you can do is to learn to speak in front of, of uh, a crowd of people, okay, because most people are really scared regarding that, myself included, okay, and I'm, I'm still, I still get like butterflies and I get nervous when I speak uh, in front of people, but it's really something that I, I've learned to try to control. I'm, I'm, it's a work in progress, okay, I can definitely get better. And also the ability to, to sell, you know, and I'm not sa saying that you should like go out and sell snake oil, but if you have a good product that you know can, can really help someone, okay, really help people, then it's more or less your, your obligation to be able to, to show them the benefits of that product, okay. He also had a day job. He was still on, on the jobs when he was like off and on. But he also was going to school at in the evenings and night, okay? He did, hadn't been to the bar. He hadn't had a drink for three months. And he was going for his daily walks for 30 minutes. He went to the gym twice a week. So he lost a few pounds. But he also, the, the sciatica was all gone in his leg. So that was good. And he's actually been on, on a date as well. Someone that he... He met um, at night school, okay, and this person was quite positive, and he was talking about her, um, you know, that they were gonna go on a few more dates and stuff. So he was really happy about that. So the transformation Lucas did, you know, uh, the last time I met him, it was like eighty percent of his back problems was all gone. You know, he had a more positive attitude, and he he had put up a few goals for himself, but most important of everything you know he was proud of himself he had this he was more proud of himself he didn't feel ashamed and he he he, he knew that he was he was uh, on the right path you know and he felt hope again so so important okay guys it's this episode has been quite like uh, a bit out there you know but this is something that I, I i get quite a few of my patients come into me and they have this problem with their back and it comes back to the anxiety that they're not making enough money or they're not able to provide for themselves or their families. So if you got some value from this, you know, please share this episode to, to on, on your different networks there. And uh, if all goes well, I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? And guys, remember, just one step away from healing your back pain. Want more Back Pain Secrets? Then go ahead and get your free copy of my best-selling book, Back Pain Secrets, at backpainsecrets.com. Inside this book, you will find my top secrets to healing your back pain without prescription drugs or surgery that have helped thousands of other people just like you.